And welcome to the show. With me in this studio are two top chefs. First, the man who firmly put Birmingham on the culinary map with his unique and Michelin star style of cooking. It's the yummy brummy himself. A fantastic moustache as well. Thank, thank you, James. Thank it's you. Glyn Pinnell. You look like one of those old weightlifters from the circus. I do, actually, don't I? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Shame I haven't got the arms to go with it. Mate. Exactly. Uh, next to is a new face to Saturday Kitchen. He's in charge of the kitchens at Michel Rue Jr.'s award-winning restaurant, the Landau in inside London's Langham Hotel. It's the clean-shaven Chris King. Great to have you on the show, Chris. Your first time on the show. Thank you But, Glyn, you're faring away. What are you going to make? Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with a roast scallop with a, an almond satay. I'm going to finish up with a little crunchy salad underneath with a little ponzu dressing on the top. Sounds pretty good. But the, the, it's, it, the satay is not made with peanuts, made with... With almond. almond? Yeah, for a little bit of a different taste. It's got a little bit of a different texture, but it's like really sort of like crunchy and it's... Yeah, it's going to really give the scallops a The tamarind really is the bit that makes oh, it. It's going to cut it all, yeah. There you go. Chris, on the menu for you, something slightly different. We've got brandad, but done in a slightly different way. What are you going to do? Yeah, we do a really creamy salt-cod brandad. Basically, a really lots of olive oil in there, so it's really sticky, really mm. delicious. Some griddled squid and just a little bit of basque chilli pepper, some espalette just to finish it off. That's it. And that's done with a little bit of herb oil with it as well. Exactly, yeah, a little freshness. There you go. So two stunning seafood dishes to look forward to. And also we've got our fantastic lineup of foodie films from the BBC's archive as well. Today we've got Rick Stein, the two good Italians, and of course the great British menu. Now our special guest comes from one of the most famous performing dynasties of all time. The mere mention of his name alone is enough to make millions of screaming fans' legs go to jelly. So heaven knows what it's going to go to Glyn Pennell over there. Please welcome Sutter the <laughs> Kitchen, it's Donny Osman! <laughs> Thank you very much. We've never had people outside this studio before. Well, I paid every one of them to be What's there. Going on? Yes. <laughs> Well, this is this is going to be interesting. I've never done a show like this before. James. You've never done a show no. like this, and, and what's because in, what's... You've, I mean, you're looking through your career. You've done, I mean, fifty most years things. Of, yeah, fifty years. Of never it. done a cooking. Yeah, you show know before. what's really interesting though. Right. I don't like scallops and I don't like squid. Well, exactly. <laughs> as I said to him earlier this morning, we're in morning, trouble, you know, guys. It's nice of them we're to in trouble the brief, uh, as well. But um, yeah. I'm hopefully going to do a nice little meat dish in between all this as well. Okay. So busy for you because you've got a new album out. And yeah. is, is, is it this the 60th album? Can you I believe? Figure I, out I, yeah, I can't believe it either. I, I went back and counted them all up on my discography, and sure enough, there's 60 albums there. 60, yeah, 60 albums. Yeah. But I can't believe it, and I did them all. <laughs> and still touring as well. You're still busy at the moment. Yes, as a matter of fact, that. right after this, so we'll talk about it later. We'll yeah, talk about we'll that because you're it. going back to Vegas as well next week. That's right. There you go. That's we'll talk right. about that. Now, of course, at the end of today's program, I'll either cook food heaven or food hell for Donny. It's up to our studio guests, our chefs over there, and some of our viewers decide which one you get. We know what our viewers are going to be choosing anyway. Uh, what about? Please food? be kind to me. I be kind to me. The phone lines are already clogged up anyway. What uh, about what about food heaven? What would it be? Well, uh, chicken. You know, you're obviously safe with chicken. You okay. know, everything tastes like chicken, right? You're safe in here with chicken. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. And what about the dreaded food hell? Okay, the hell would be uh, eggplant. I can't stand eggplant. A friend of mine came over to the house uh, several years ago and said, let me cook dinner for you. I said, well, well, sure, why not? I can't cook, so go ahead. And she cooked this eggplant. The dog wouldn't even eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Hopefully she's not watching this then. Well, if she is, don't cook anymore, please. <laughs> this is aubergine, of course, for people who don't know that. There you go. No, so what's the... it called? Aubergine. Aubergine. Yeah, aubergine. That's eggplant? Yeah, it's eggplant. Same thing. Okay. There you go. Right. Uh, so it's either chicken or aubergine or eggplant. For food heaven, I'm going to look for India for my inspiration, because I know you like curries as well. A little love bit of Indian flavours. Indian food. Uh, the chicken is rubbed with some ginger, garlic, cumin, curry leaves, and pot roasted, and served with a spicy mint chutney made with coriander, a little bit of mint, some yogurt, and served with a broad bean, pea, mint, salad on the side. How does mm, that sound? That looks good, really Sounds good. good. Oh, Donny could be facing food hell. Aubergine or eggplant. The aubergine is sliced lengthways, covered with breadcrumbs. Uh, folded inside, we've got some uh, mozzarella cheese, bit of parmesan, some basil, and served with a tomato and basil sauce. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, well, that's, James. That's, that, that, well, I tried that might work. <laughs> yeah, well, it might do. Yeah, uh, you might change my you, mind here. You have to wait to the end of the show to find out which one he's going to get. Now, if you'd like to question, put your questions for any of our chefs today, I should do that. Put our questions to anybody here today. You can do that by calling this number. That's 033-0123-1410. That's 033-0123-1410. And a few of you to put your questions to us live a little later on. And if I do get to speak to you, then I'm asking you whether you want Donny to face food heaven or food hell. Now, are you feeling hungry? Well, I haven't eaten breakfast, so I'm very hungry. So, so hell might taste a, a very good today well, because I'm so hungry. Well, you said about fish and breakfast. We've got scallops on the menu. Oh, They'll okay. be all right. All right. They, well, you, you know what? You know what? Am I following you? No, you can, can stay here. You can stay okay. there. Yeah, they, I'm they willing cook. to try anything today, James. They, they cook by this man. Uh, it's Birmingham's own version of Donny Osmond. It's Glyn Pennell. <laughs> I am indeed. Uh, that's, a, that's a fine moustache you've got Thank there, you. Thank you, James. I'm just honoured to be in the same building as such a legend. Two of you are legends, anyway. Right, OK, then. So what are we going to do, then? This is slightly different, so... Yeah, so we're going to... 
gonna, uh, I'm gonna crack on with the uh, the almond satay. If you want to yeah. do some uh, Julien Le Veg for me, which is like yeah. thinly stripped, for yeah. those who don't know what that is, I'm gonna get that on. So I'm gonna chop a shallot. Yeah. So yeah. So this is this. I'm making the. You've got a raw salad to go with it, and you're making the the topping of the scallops. Is that yeah. Right? So I'm making. So it's not a, a satay as a sauce, but more of a uh, like a condiment, more like um, like a crunchy. A compliment. So the almonds are playing a massive part of the dish. Right. These are the nib almonds that we got on there. Now these are slightly toasted already. Yeah. And so these are toasted. So I've got a shallot here, which I'm just going to blast down. Okay. And then we're going to sweat that off. And then we're going to add a little bit of ginger. Yep. A little bit of oil in there. So Donny, on your travels, you must have you must have been to Birmingham. Birmingham. You must have been to Birmingham. <laughs> you sound like yeah, me then. Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham. There you go. It's getting the, get, the accent's yeah, nearly I'm there. I'm trying. It's uh, Dick Van Dyke, but it's okay. Yeah, it's nearly there. So what's the, you started with the sauce doing what? So the, the, the scallops are in there. Uh, sorry, the uh, shallots are in there. Yeah. I'm going to sweat those down, touch more oil. Then we're going to put a little bit of grated ginger. Yeah. And then sweat them down. Now I mentioned the NEC because we're both appearing in there in the in the good food show. That's right. That's at the end, end of the month. The, end of the month, which is it gets bigger and bigger, and obviously. Saturday Kitchen has its own stand there and stuff, so we have the guests and we recreate the studio, which is fantastic. And always a massive sellout. And we always like to have you in Birmingham, James, you know that. Well, you know, it's... <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a legend in Birmingham. Legend in Birmingham, yeah. yeah like, the good food show has just got bigger and bigger. I mean, I remember when I was a commie uh, at, the, uh, at the hotel on the site, I remember seeing all these great chefs cooking. And then to be part of it now is absolutely amazing. So, we sweat the ginger off yeah. as well. And then right. we're going to add the almonds, which uh, have been toasted. If you wanted to, you could really go if you could do cashew nuts, or you could try it with uh, Brazil nuts. Now, we're doing well this with scallops, but it does work. This would work brilliantly with chicken. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is good. Perfect. It's nice of you to read the brief as well. I didn't know until I got here. You didn't like fish? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I might do is I might do a little vegetarian one. OK, but with the, the, with the scallops, it works fine. But, the, you know, pan-fried bit of chicken, this works delicious. Oh, this well. would be fantastic with chicken. The topping is fantastic. So, right there. We've got some uh, some soy, which we'll put in. Okay. Yeah. Right, I this have is to it. say, James, I'm really impressed the way you're uh, preparing those veggies. I get a lot of practice on this show, Donny. You obviously. I bet you do. <laughs> I get you a should, lot of practice. You, so. you should see him washing up, huh? Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, you want me to so. prepare the scallops for you? Yes. Yeah, so we got we got the scallops, which will. Uh, if you want to knock together the. Uh, the I'll, ponzu as well. I'll get the scallops. You're going to get the you. scallops. I'll do the ponzu. So I'll put that down. Uh, pan, we get on to the scallops. We're a nice hot pan. You keep them nice and uh, transparent in the middle. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm really regretting doing scallops now, do you know that? Yeah. Wait, wait until you see the squid. Right. Oh, yeah. No, wait until you see the squid bit, yeah. No, no, no. So, so gonna... the scallops, these are just the hand-eye ones we've got as well. Yeah. You want the row on or off? Off, uh, off please. You oh, can please. actually, the other thing you can do is you can separate the row and you can throw the rows in just at the end of the yeah. uh, cooking process. Just so people know, there's a flat shell and a round shell. What you do is you... I, it's easier with a table knife, to be honest. Inside there, on the flat shell, and cut alongside the flat shell, like that. Yeah. Slice it through, and it'll open up. OK, so we've got a little bit of chopped chilli to go in the... The, tam the tamarind's now in with the almonds. Yeah. Now, the tamarind's sl it's got a bitterness to it as well. It's a yeah. sharpness to it, which is really good, I find. Which, again, will cut through the, the sort of the, the creaminess of the, of the almonds and also the... The, the fish itself. Yeah. yeah. Now your restaurant as well. You're still going strong because you've got, you, well, you've got the, the 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 bar, the bistro side next door, which always seems to be pretty busy. Yeah, it's always busy, and, and again, you know, the Birmingham food scene is uh, literally it's just getting better and better. Loads more independence and and stuff. And we've got, uh, you know, what seven seven and a half years at Pernells, and the bistro's yep. been there for three years, so that's going really well. Right, I'm going to take the scallops out for you. Okay. So, I'm going to go a little bit of water. So, just to, just to recap what you've got in there, what have so you got? So, uh, I've got the shallots, I've got the uh, almonds, I've got a bit of ginger, I've got honey, I've got soy, and I've got a chilli which I've just dropped in there, the tamarind paste, in with the coriander, and then I need the juice. I'll now, I'm making on. the dressing, so what have we got? This soy? So, that's called, a, that's called a ponzu, so we've got soy, mirin, red wine, vinegar. Yep. And... Stock syrup, Stock is syrup. Yep. And, lo and loads of lemon, loads of lemon. OK. So this is the dressing that's just going to go over the top of the salad. Over the top, so it's almost served at room temperature. OK. OK. Now we'll mm -hmm. and then I'll get the scallops on. 
And then just slice these for you. So you want these slicing in slicing half? Slicing half, well. so we cook them nice and fast. Yeah. And again, we just want a really nice colour on the outside, almost uh, almost glassy in the middle, so we don't overcook them, so they're really nice and fresh. The hand dives, so they're beautiful and plump. He's trying to sell them, you see, Donny. What else have you done? He's doing a good job, but I'm still not convinced. <laughs> will you try one, though, for me? You've got to try one. I, I definitely will try one, Okay, Glenn. okay. Yeah. There you go. I'll try and sing if you want me to. I just thought I'd put that in there. No, maybe not. Okay, that. maybe not. That. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you'll try, I'll try. As you'll find out as a show, because I am very trying. <laughs> okay, so the scallops are in, yep. James. So we've got our little salad. Do you want to start dressing the shells for me with a bit of the uh, salad? I can do that. Brilliant. Now, there's no, not much salt and pepper in here. Do you want me to season this? Not really, because of the. Um, put a little bit of seasoning, because you've got the soy out and you've got the soy in here. Not too much, Not yeah? too much, no. Okay. Uh, remember, if you'd like to put your questions to either of our chefs today, you can call us now. This number, that's 033 0123-1410. 033 0123-1410. Standard call charges do apply, of course. Right, right. We've got a little bit of that in there. A bit of lime in there. Fin I've finished yeah. the, uh, the satay with a bit of butter. Which yeah. just helps you pull it all together. I'll finish that off. Will okay. you wash your hands? Because your mother will be on the phone. Oh, okay. Right. Hey, not again, James. Yeah, not again. Not as well. again. No. <laughs> so, so you just have a little bit of colour on these. Brilliant. So we've got our scallops in there. We've got some coriander shoots to finish it as well. Which always give it a bit more of a fragrant taste. Yeah. Can I finish this off with a bit of butter on? Yeah, we'll put a little butter. Give it one second on that side. <laughs> just, just start. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Just a little a bit, bit more, maybe? Yeah. Is a bit more. Is that not enough butter yeah. for you, James? That'll do. That'll do. Just just that. Bit of salt, okay. yeah, maybe? Bit of seasoning. That's brilliant. There you go. Are we ready? Your black pepper. Yeah, fire away. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Got the ponzu, which we're going to serve. That's the ponzu dressing. Yeah. So. You can actually buy it already made ponzu. But why not give it a blast? Try it yourself. And the scallops looking? Yeah. Delicious. Looking good. They don't take very long to cook at all, these. No, 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 and they're so fresh as well, which is fantastic. I'll bring these, bring these things across as well. Is that enough veg you want in there? That's beautiful. So, a little bit of a season just at the end. I always season the stuff at the end so you get a maximum concentration of flavour. A little bit of pepper. Squeeze the lemon, squeeze the lemon always goes well. Just to finish them off. Okay, start to press. I've done one each as well. I don't want to start, and you start fighting over a scallop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, I don't scallops. think Donnie will be fighting for anything. I, I don't think, think so, yeah. no, normally. <laughs> well, right. I, I reckon you're going to like it, I do. I think you're going to like it. And then we've got. Okay, what is that? Almonds over the top. Yeah. So now, this is the, the, this is the, 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 the made that thick is the tamarind, yeah. but the, tamarind, the yeah. paste form. If you're buying it, buy the paste, because it's a, a bit. Messy if you if you start buying it as the the seeds yeah, as well. Yeah, the seeds it? and it's a bit time consuming and yeah. stuff. But if you can buy the paste, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. And again, you can use it in curries and, and stuff. And it gives a lovely acidity to to the dish. Let's just wash it. Do you want me to top this over with the dressing as well? Please. Yeah. There you go. And then uh, we got these that Massimo left last week, so. We <laughs> <laughs> See, you you've changed. You've changed. <laughs> Since I've had this moustache, first... I've really, I've really, I've really <laughs> When you first came on the show, it was all, what are you doing here? Look. Bit... <laughs> you look like teamwork, is there, James? Eh? Yeah. You look like a bit of teamwork. There you go. Oh, there we there go. go. Happy with that? Yeah, ponzu over the top. So tell us the name of this dish, then. So we've got beautiful roasted scallops with an almond satay, a crunchy salad and a ponzu dressing. From here, it looks fantastic. <laughs> and, well, um... yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> he looks so nervous, that guy. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. Don't be, don't be, don't be frightened. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I got to say, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Just um, so, so scallops are not that bad, but what a, you know, you've got squid to come. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you got to get the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell right. us what you think. Well, Chris, okay. fire away. Dive in. No, but okay. Smells absolutely amazing. But the yeah. top part of it, this... this uh, the almond uh, satay. Oh, yeah, well, it's fantastic. Mm. Okay, mm. now the scallops. It's, <laughs> 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 it's just the texture. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> we're moving on before right. we get the bucket. Right, we need some wine to go with this. <laughs> well, it's Peter Richards has been down to Wiltshire this week. Let's find out what he's chosen to go with Glyn's glorious scallops. I'm going to get the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm at Salisbury Cathedral, famously painted by John Constable, home to an original 1215 Magna Carta and within striking distance of delicious wine. Glyn scallops are so delicious, I had to try them twice, just to make doubly sure I found the right wine, you understand. Just like the chef, this is a dish that doesn't lack for wow factor. It's punchy, it's invigorating, it's just tremendous. Now, we can't possibly hope to match all of that with the wine, it would just be too much. So, the key here is to find a wine that calms everything down, that just complements key flavours, but offsets the spice and the savoury intensity of those ingredients. Now, a great variety like Pinot Gris works well here, as does Torrentes, like this lovely finest Torrentes from Argentina. But by far and away, the best match comes courtesy of that master of spice, the Riesling grape variety. And I found us a bottle that looks great and is just as smart on the inside. It is from the Mosel Valley in Germany, the quite fabulous cliffhanger. Riesling isn't everyone's favourite grape variety, and it can come in a huge range of styles, from, from bone dry to super sweet. But when it's made in a style like this one, which is gently off dry, fresh but, but balanced, it really comes into its own with zingy, spicy recipes like Glynn's. Firstly, that lovely limey acidity cleanses the palate, picks up on those citrus ingredients and works beautifully with the scallop and the fish sauce. Then there's the, the crunchy green apple flavour which offsets that intensely savoury soy character and ties in with the crisp vegetables and the nuts. And finally, that touch of richness just calms the heat of the chilli and works really well with the honey. So, Glyn, thank you for a show-stopping dish. And here is an absolute barnstormer of a wine to enjoy with it. Joking here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right there. Oh, oh, oh. You, you finished off Donny Osman. What are you doing? <laughs> that was the, oh, that was the second bite as well. There was a lot of chili. <laughs> Seriously, there was a lot of chili in that face, wasn't there? I'm all game. I'm all game. I'm all game. What do you want? What do you reckon? Well, I thought they were all right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love the taste of the sauce. It's just the, the, the texture of the scallops. It's not for you. At, least, got, at least you've yeah. had a go. That's, I, yeah, I, I, had a go. I just can't wait for this quick, to be honest. Good luck with that one, Chris, but what do you reckon? Uh, I love it. I love it. I like the crunchiness of the, the chutney. Fantastic. I like the lychee a little mm. bit in the Riesling. Fantastic. Yeah. I like it, but not as much as this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, all I can smell at the minute is lilt, because I've got, like, a tropical moustache wax on it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm tasting. I'm not sure it's going to go wrong. <laughs> Coming up, Chris, we'll be making a brand ad. Remind yeah. us what you're going to do with it. Please don't say squid. Yeah. Otherwise, so we'll lose our yes. guests. Tentacles. Oh, come on, <laughs> Chris, please. Yeah. A All right. really creamy brand ad, a okay. little bit of herb oil, and okay. a little bit more chili. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And don't forget, you can okay. ask these two a question if you call us now on this number. That's 033 or 1231410. That's 033 or 1231410. Standard, standard call charges do apply, of course. That pasta dish looked great. Now, pasta, of course, as we know, is such a versatile ingredient. And Rick enjoyed it with seafood, which I'm not going to do for you. Okay, thank Johnny. you. Uh, I thought I'd do sort of something pretty straightforward, but it's using leftover bits of stews if you want. So I've got some stewing steak here. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is stew this. Um, I've got one already done because we're going to take the filling out and then fill it some little tortellini served with a little wild mushroom sauce. So the stewing steak that we got, we're going to brown off first of all. So very hot pan in there and just incorporate it with some carrots, a few bit of onions, bay leaves, some a uh, bit of garlic, peppercorns and a bit of stock. And then now when you say it was a very hot pan, <clears throat> that's what I've always heard is that to cook a steak, you sear it and then you bring the heat down and let it cook through. Is that correct? Uh, it depends how thick your steak is, I suppose, more than anything else. But obviously, right. being in the States, you've got... Yeah, like, the thick steak. The wedges. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Very hot, first of all. Very hot, and then turn it Very down. Very hot and turn it down, yeah. Uh, but with this, what we're just going to do is get colour on it, because the colour makes it into a dark sauce at the end of it. So. Oh, so OK. That's, right. that's where you've got a brown meat for a brown stew. So okay. you, yeah, there's no uh, gravy browning or cheating. It's just basically browning the meat. First of all, so a little bit garlic. of garlic. Oh, I well. love garlic. A bit more garlic. Oh, more garlic. All that garlic. All that garlic. All that's that going to go in there. Uh, some peppercorns and throw everything in. Now, it's interesting while we were watching that, we are talking about your career because, I mean, what a career it is. You've almost had sort of three careers in one, if that's... Yeah, that's we were it. talking earlier about the fact that 60 albums, and I think the reason why it added up so quickly is because part of the Osmonds, part of Donnie and Marie, and then the Donnie Osmond solo career. So I was in the studio all the time. So what, what, what do you think was the success? Do you think it was that lucky break? Because you did... Uh, yeah. 
I, I think every, everybody needs a lucky break. Mine was on the Andy Williams show. I was five years old when I started. And, five uh, years old. Yeah, that's uh, that's when I began the whole show business thing. And then when I was 12, that's when my first hit record happened. It was One Bad Apple, and then Puppy Love came when I was about 13, 14 years old. And then the Donnie and Marie show began, and then it just kept going and going. But the thing is, you got to do in this business, James, is you got to reinvent yourself. You can't really rest on your laurels. I see a lot of artists and a lot of bands do that. You got to keep in the stu you got to stay in the studio. You got to keep thinking ahead yeah. and keep reinventing yourself. Because I mean, the seventies was massive for for all you guys. Because it was. I mean, I read what was it, eighty million records in yeah. one just a one twelve month period. It was it? it was crazy. It was it was a, it was an amazing time, uh, and I loved it. There was a there was a time. You must James. have hated it though, didn't you? As a kid? Well, yeah, it was a love love hate relationship because. Um, I wanted to move on. I wanted to be an adult entertainer, and everybody kept me in the puppy love kind of pigeonhole. But uh, over time, I've learned to embrace that past. As a matter of fact, I do puppy love in, our sh in the show in Vegas. And I, I look back at that career now with, uh, with a lot of love and passion, and, and I embraced it because it was such a great time in my life. But, but do you get a chance to do the things that kids did? Did you no. get? You didn't get any of that? No, no. Do you miss that sort of thing? Or is it well, you've you, got you, kids yourself now. You don't miss what you, what you don't know. I mean, I live vicariously through my children now and my grandkids. Speaking of grandkids, check it out. Wednesday, my yeah. wife and I are getting our seventh grand, grandbaby. Seventh? Seventh grandbaby. Fantastic. Well, Wednesday. congratulations, Ed. We, d we, don't, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. They don't want to find out until it comes. But uh, <laughs> we are so excited. Now, tell us about what you're doing now, because 60th album is out now. And yes. Oh, this and check this out. Yeah. It looks like it's going to enter the charts around number 14. We're not sure exactly at this point in time. Right. But if it does, that will be the highest entry level on the album charts I've ever had. Really? In my entire career. That's just this side of the... This side? You, you the case? world. Really? The world. I've never had an album debut that high. Because no, number ones, you were number one singles. For, number one single, yeah. but the entry to the album charts right. has never been that high. You know, tell us about the album because I was listening to it. It's all sort of cover versions, but they've all got stories throughout your well, career, this, spanning 50 years. So. This being the 60th album and celebrating 50 years in, in the business, it's a hallmark album. It's a pivotal album in my life, so I wanted to make it pretty special. So just to record a bunch of songs, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, whatever, you know? Yeah. So every song on this album has got a significant story behind it. For instance, you remember Michael Jackson's song, Ben? I was reading about this because yeah. it's quite a fascinating story, isn't it? That was actually written for me. I was supposed to sing that song. And the reason I didn't is because I was on tour with my brothers. Ooh, that looks really good. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, sorry, a little ADD here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I was on tour with my brothers. They had to finish the movie. So they said, well, let's just get Michael Jackson to sing it. He's available. He's got a high voice. Why not? Because that was one of his first... It was his first number one solo record. Yeah. And I remember talking to Michael about this. It was, our, our lives paralleled so much back in the 70s. So he took my song, but I actually took one of his songs. My first one, uh, uh, number one record, One Bad Apple, was written for the Jackson 5. So, so it's interesting how fate kind of... But you were great friends, uh, you know, when he was alive oh, as well. You were great. We, we were we were good mates. Because he gave I, I you some good advice as well, particularly in the hard times when, you know, after the 70s, that, that lull of the 80s, you're trying to reinvent yourself. And yeah, yeah. Some horrendous things. So you were told to sort of make up stories and to get rid of the squeaky clean image. Oh, man, oh yeah. Even sort of Michael even told me to change my name. He actually did. <laughs> he said, Donna, your name is Poison. How was that going to work? <laughs> I, I don't know. So he said, uh, and, and this was... Oh, it's a funny story. I was over at his house, and he says, I've got to go to, uh, to meet Quincy over at A&M Records. Do you want to come with me? I, I want to play you this album. It's called Thriller. I was one of the first ones to hear it. Really? So he had this little cassette, yeah. and we hopped in his Rolls Royce. He was a terrible driver, by Chris the way. Chris is looking, going, what's a cassette? What's <laughs> <laughs> one of them things? <laughs> and so we're in, in his, his uh, Rolls Royce, and I'm listening to Thriller. And I'm thinking, this is going to be huge. This is unbelievable. And then I said, Michael, how do I get back on the charts? How do I get, how do I get back there? And that's when he said, Donnie, you've got to change your name. <laughs> and I told him he's got to change his clothes, and I think he thought I said no. Yeah, right. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> we like that one. <laughs> so give us the name of the album. What's it, what's it called? The Soundtrack of My Life. 
and it really, literally is the soundtrack of my life. And I've got, I, I went, because we've, the, the, my, even my Twitter's been going mad. I haven't just started Twitter, but people have been uh, sending me questions. Uh, so Jill would like to know what's made you grounded, uh, given the mania and hysteria of sort of your younger life. What's that? Is it family that's made you grounded? Uh, no, gravity. Gravity? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think it's my family. It's my, my family and faith has kept me grounded. Uh, when I go home, uh, I take out the, the rubbish, uh, you know, I take out the garbage and I mow the lawn and I do all the normal, normal stuff. Normal, back to normal. Yeah, because I, I forced myself to do normal things because I never lived a normal childhood. Because you go for, I mean, literally next week you're in Vegas as well because you've got the Donnie Marie show, you're back That's doing right. that again. And then in two weeks we start the Christmas tour. So it, it's a crazy life, but you know what? I love it. I would have gotten out of it a long time ago if I didn't really enjoy what I do. I love getting on stage. I love singing. I, lo I love performing. I love entertaining. I love watching that audience trans that transform and having them right in the palm of your hands. I learned this from Elvis Presley. I remember going to his show at the Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas, probably around 73, 74, yeah, something like that. And uh, I went to see his closing night, and he had the audience in the palm of his hands. He was just a fabulous entertainer. And he stayed over to watch our opening night. And I remember I was in his dressing room getting ready with my brothers, and the door opens up, and in walks Elvis Presley. And he says, hi, everybody, I'm Elvis Presley. And he really talked like that, too, you yeah. know? <laughs> he says, I'm, I'm Elvis Presley. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> but he was just the nicest guy and just kind of... As a 14-year-old kid watching this, I thought, here is a man who I saw last night who was the king of rock and roll on stage and walks in the door and he's just the most humble guy. But, it, and it really affected me. Well, you don't fancy taking over a cooking show, do you? Because I could do with my Saturday morning's back if you want one. Oh, man, that looks so good. That's a little tortellini we've made. We've incorporated the meat with a little bit of meat stock as well. Yeah. Um, in there, I've got some cream. No, well, no scallops in there, are there? No scallops. Sorry, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dive in, tell us what you think. Because okay. that's got a little bit of... Uh, uh, wild mushrooms, got some tarragon, a little bit of uh, chervil, such a star anise sort of flavour as well. What, what was that last one? This is chervil. Chervil? Yeah, heard it's like chervil. a little, little star anise flavour. Taste that, okay. but it's All quite right. an unusual sort of taste. But Oh, wow. See, I read the brief, boys. There you go. <laughs> right, we'll be cooking for Donnie at the end of the show. It could be facing food heaven. Chicken, the chicken is rubbed with uh, cumin, ginger, and curry leaves, then slowly pot roasted and served with a mint and coriander chutney and a broad bean and pea salad on the side. Or it could be facing food hell, of course. Aubergine, the aubergine uh, is sliced and dusted with breadcrumbs, filled with some mozzarella and some uh, parmesan cheese, and then pan fried and served with a San Marzano tomato and basil sauce to go with it. Some of our viewers in the chefs in the studio get side Donnie's fate today, but you have to wait to the end of the show to see the final result. Uh, I've got one last question mm. for you as well. Uh, we've got, I love uh, the way you pulled the meat apart. I would like to know, mm. what's your music heaven and your music hell? Mm, music heaven. See... I've been in the music business all my life. I love all kinds of music. Brian, Colbert, Gr Brian Colbertson, have you ever heard of him? No. Nope. I love to put his album on and just chill. Uh, I love uh, Sam Smith, right? Ed Sheeran. What, what, about the, what about The Hell? The Hell? Yeah. That's <laughs> sex is going to destroy somebody's career. <laughs> uh, right. hey, Marie Osmond. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I didn't we'll be say that. We'll sending her a DVD of this. Uh, that'll be a bit twitchy on stage next week. Uh, right, we've been really given the best of the great British venue. The regular judges are joined by side the studio waiting for Donny, but inside, all the excitement oh. is in the Saturday Kitchen Omelette Challenge. Let's hope Chris's nerves aren't scrambled from the experience of cooking his first dish live on TV. And and he's able to produce a cracking omelette to grab that oh. top spot on the leaderboard. You can see they get worse. Even after eight years, yeah. they're still getting worse. It's really uh, bad. Uh, it'll be up against Glenn in about 20 minutes or so. And will Donnie be facing that food heaven? Pot roast chicken uh, with an Indian style mint and coriander chutney, or food hell bread uh, crumbed aubergine with a tomato and mozzarella sauce. Uh, you can see what it ends up with at the end of the show. Right, let's cook in next. And there's a new face to Saturday Kitchen. He's in charge of Michel Rue Jr.'s restaurant, the Landau, inside London's Langham Hotel. It's Chris King. Great to have on the show, Chris. Thank you very much. Um, and we got Brandard. We don't often cook with Brandard on the show. Um, okay. But this is it. Explain to us what we're going to do with it. So this is the beginning of the salt of the Brandard is the salt card. And it's, yep. it's hard, it's stiff, it's been really, really heavily salted. Yeah. So what we do is we soak that for 48 hours in several changes of water. Yeah. And we end up with a product that looks like this. 
You've got to change the water quite a bit. You do. You've got to look after it. Sometimes you've got to keep you can changing. actually buy it like that, though. Already you, done? If your fish, fishmonger has it on offer, sometimes it's already desalted. Yeah. So what it is is essentially poached cod, emulsified with a little bit of potato and a, a lot, a lot of olive oil. But it's generally done with baker potatoes because you've got to keep it nice and dry. So we've got exactly there a you baker go. Baker potato that you want me There's to. There's a guy. Do you want to pop them in? Stick that in the oven. Thank you very much. So I just put the fish in a pan. Yep. Cold pan. Garlic. Half a head of garlic, just cut in half. Okay. Now you're going to do some croutons with this that as well. That would be lovely. Then? Garlic croutons. Yeah. Just shallow okay. fry and a little bit of garlic oil. Okay. Thyme, bay leaf, and then just cover with milk. Just like that. Just until it's covered. We're going to make some parsley oil as well, James. Yeah. Okay. Now tell us about tell us about the restaurant first of all, because it's had a, a bit of a, re a refit recently. The, the whole hotel there. Yeah. Uh, well, in terms of our hotel's history, it's recent. Yeah, it's a uh, 150th anniversary next year. Yeah. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, a lot of big projects planned. Had a lot of fun uh, going back to the old menus from the original opening time. Yeah. To, uh, to work with, to, for inspiration, for new, new dishes, for private events, for big parties. And this is just off Regent Street, isn't it? This, just this off Regent Street, right yeah. opposite the BBC, just at I've the actu top. I've actually eaten at the restaurant. Have you? Uh, the last time I was here, I stayed there. And it was fantastic. I had to. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. It was fantastic. Thank you very didn't much, have sir. fish then, did you? Eh? Didn't he get? Didn't get the fish. Didn't get no, the, <laughs> the squid. You didn't have the squid. Okay, we're well, talking about the squid. Uh, yeah. Donnie, here, this this bit's for you, right? Oh. The whole on. animal. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'd have to just. Yeah. Okay. Because since we're pushing the envelope here, this All is. Right. Yeah. Squid, yeah. the body, the, yeah. the wings, the fins, yeah. the tentacles, with yeah. the, the little suckers okay, on them stop, and everything. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> okay. Now you're going to clean this out, so I am going to clean it. I'm yep. just going to remove the fins. Yep. I'm not going to use them for this recipe, but you can braise them, stew them, maybe with chickpeas and tomato, delicious. Right? I'm going to open up the squid along the, its natural line there. Yeah. And I'm just going to scrape out. Any little membranes in the middle. So tell everybody how you ended up where you are now. How did I end up cooking at the restaurant? Yeah. I had a very lucky break uh, because I entered cooking a different route from a lot of people. I have yeah. a, an English degree, actually, um, which doesn't really help you in the kitchen, except for <laughs> proofreading menus, right? Yeah. Um, but I wrote an email to a then slightly, slightly less famous Michel Roux, yeah. um, asking him how I could get into really break into cooking. Yeah. What school I should go to. And uh, luckily, he said, don't bother. Come and see me for a couple of days. Right. Trial in the kitchen, and we'll see what we can do from there. So when was this then, sir? That was in 2003. So you happened. worked your way up inside that kitchen? Or? Exactly, yeah. I ended up as sous chef. I uh, went to a few different restaurants in between, um, see some other stuff. But yeah. Yeah, I've been with him most of my career. He's it's been in the background. You, it's least. interesting, Doddy said you need a lucky break. That was, that was your lucky break. Exactly. He had. All right, the right email at the right time. And he was obviously looking for someone. Isn't, isn't it interesting? Everyone who is successful in life, they start out with a lucky break. They got to have that break. Still waiting for my... To get into whatever <laughs> industry. <laughs> 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 so our parsley is super tender. No, mine, mine was a guy called Brian Turner. I don't know whether you know a guy called Brian uh, Turner. It rings a bell. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like Elvis. Yeah, he's the, Elvis, <laughs> he's the Elvis of British cookery. Yeah, he's a Northern Elvis. Oh, I see, okay. A British cookery. But does he, does he talk like this? No, but he wears yeah. white suits. Really he, he does after about three or four whiskeys. He talks quite like that, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. He was the one that offered me a job when I was, I think I was about 14, really. That was, yeah. That's what he's, anyway, carry on. All right, this is going to be noisy. Doing? This is the parsley oil. Yeah. So really tender, blanched parsley. We do that just to set the chlorophyll. Just the tops, not the stalks? Not the stalks. We just want to boil it until it's tender, and that helps it to keep its green colour. Now, you're going to do a dressing while you make all this noise. The dressing is what? Squid ink? Squid ink, lemon juice, and just a little bit of olive oil. But please, no salt, James. <laughs> okay. the lemon juice and olive the oil. Salty cod already. What's squid ink? OK. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. We've got a little bit of this, really. That's the black ink. just been told what squid ink is, haven't <laughs> 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 Just, just whispered. Yeah, yeah. That's the black ink. The, yeah. the squirt out. Yeah. Why do you want to eat black ink? <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the essence of the seed, Donnie. 
So you get the like flavors, the you get the, 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 almost the taste of the sea with it. But that's what they spit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're about to eat it, it's lovely. Why put in what they spit out? <laughs> <laughs> it's also, it's got like a fantastic color. You could say that about an egg. Oh, yeah, uh, that's, true. True. that's true. That's, that's true. true. Yeah. But that's it takes the omelets yet. And anyway. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, that looks I good. just love the reaction of the uh, the fact. But I mean, the, the ink has got such a fantastic flavour, which complements its actual own sort of the actual body as well. Okay. He's, he's well, selling it. He's selling it. Earlier. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Right. So, Chris, you want me to then just? We're gonna. You basically uh -huh. score this to tenderise it a little bit. Yeah. Score it to tenderise it. Yeah. You just need to cut the tentacles into three for me, please. I can do that. So, how yeah. you're gonna divide eight tentacles into? Evenly, but try well, I your think best. there'll only be probably three of us that are eating it. I think this one. <laughs> so right. now, tell us about this brand update because so, the secret is it's not, not adding too much milk to this. So that that is the trick. That is the trick. Um, so an emulsion is when oil and liquid are friends, right? Yeah. So we got the fish that goes in there, the dry potato. May I, James? Yep. Yeah, there you go. You That's the potato. For me. Thank you very much. So we need about a third of the volume of the what fish. So and potato. how long did you cook that fish for? Literally, I brought it up okay. just until it started to boil, just until you see the little bubbles, and then pulled it off and just left and it to rest and cook off. through. Yeah, that's okay. all you need to do. Right. So we're about to make this. So this is the this is the important bit. This is where we could mess up, really. This exactly. This bit, so I just need to make sure I got my things in gear. Okay. I'm gonna put the majority of the cooking liquid, which now tastes like garlic, tastes like but, yeah, fish. Be careful not Ta to add all the milk. That's the I've done this before, James. Yep. This is the moment of jeopardy, though. Yeah. You need enough, you need enough milk to make the emulsion. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just a mashed potato, mashed fish. Yeah. But not too much, and it turns very runny. And then oh, we go. Oh, oh, we got some oil. There you go. We got some oil for you. We got the wrong oil. 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 Yeah. The correct oil. oil. Thank there you, sir. Go. So, the screen. We're just going to char grill this, please. And I'm just going to really go with the brand ad as if I was making uh, mayonnaise, just slowly at the beginning. It takes quite a lot of oil, James. Yeah. You see how we're doing? Yeah, it tastes... Looking delicious. So will that get thicker as it cooks? Thick, as it, no, as it, as I add the oil, it will get thicker. Yeah. And then, when it is cold, it sets hard. Right. And you can make it into little balls. Yeah. For a canapé or for a, a fish cakes for dinner. Yeah. Right, I'll move this out of the way. And you've there got you this go. squid ink that we've got in there. Now, the squid itself, we're not going to cook this for very long. No, we just want to turn them over now, James. Yeah, I'm going to do split that right. There you go. Perfect. There is our olive brand ad. Roll that over yeah, there. Yeah, James, I was just saying to Glenn here, this is like art in motion. Art in motion? It really is. It's, it's an art of what you guys do. Well... We just make it up each week. <laughs> <laughs> and then as it cooks, you see it curls like that. Yeah. And then we're going to make them look like little squids again for you, Don. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Very kind of you. Also, Chris, it's, um, for me, I worked in the Basque region, there and it's got almost great. similarities to, like, uh, uh, bacalao pilpil, -pil, which is the, yeah. the salt fish which is cooked and emulsified with the olive oil. So, for me, I'm, I can't wait to taste this. It's, really? Yeah. It's, this, it's is, like uh, this is a Northern Spanish sort of feel to it. Hmm. This is a dish which is always on the menu at the restaurant. This is uh, one we never really take off. It's not the one that Donnie picked, that's for sure. No, for sure. <laughs> for no, sure. Never, so, know. never know. Nice little bit See, of that's just the thing. The I'm willing to try it all. And then there's your squid. Perfect. Sits on there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You ready for this, Donnie? Yes, I am ready for this. <laughs> the <bit of> green <laughs> oil. <laughs> so here's the, fre the fresh part of the dish. Yeah. Green, vibrant parts of the oil. Looks amazing on the plate as well. Oh, it's fantastic. Lovely. A bit of crunch. Garlic cow. crouton, crunchy. And then tell us about this pepper. So this is espelette pepper, which comes from the French part of the Basque region. Which and they, they dry it outside their houses in big strings. Yeah. It's not super hot. It's more of an aromatic there you go. So give us the name of this dish. This is a salt cod brandad, a seared squid, a little bit of espelette pepper. That's what there it is. Go. Tentacles forward. Looks fantastic. <laughs> um, it's ready now. <laughs> okay. Yes, dive in. So, okay. I'll sit over here, Chris. But 
<clears throat> the brandad is, I mean, that is delicious with the oil. It's just it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm just putting some of this, this black stuff on it as yeah, well. The bit that, What's the squid, it called the again? Squid ink. I'm going for it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's actually really good. Excellent. So, good. See? <laughs> <laughs> Surprised himself. Silence. There what you go. A... All right, let's go back to Salisbury to see what I want expert wow. Peter Richards. Let's see what to do with Chris's brilliant brandad. It's good, isn't it? That is really good. They got it. Enjoy but this. then there's the tentacles. <laughs> there's a beautiful simplicity to Chris's salt cob, which means it goes with a whole range of white wines. That said, there is a gentle sort of iodine note from that squid ink, which can make some whites taste metallic. To counter that, we need some generous fruit character. Nothing too dry or hard-edged, but also something elegant enough not to overwhelm these subtle flavours. Now, Alvarino works really well, as does Pecorino from Italy, like this lovely Terra di Chieti. But this recipe has a really Mediterranean feel to it. And the best wine from a cast of many that I tried alongside it was a white from Mediterranean France. It is the great value, taste the difference, Languedoc white. There's a tendency to think of Mediterranean France as red wine country, but that's to miss out on what are some really food-friendly, often very sort of succulent white wines. Now that succulence is what makes this such a seamless match because the style just envelops those lovely briny, sort of salty flavours of the salt cod, the squid and the squid ink here in this lovely, rich, generous structure. And when you try the two together, you can almost feel the Mediterranean sun warming your face. There's a flavour of sort of sun-baked herbs in here, which picks up on the bay and the thyme in the recipe. And it's the kind of wine that really needs food, a very specific Mediterranean-style food, to come into its own, which it does brilliantly here. So, Chris, thank you for this gorgeous, subtle mouthful, and here's a wine that pays great respect to your recipe without costing the earth. Cheers. Cheers indeed. What do you yeah. reckon to the wine? I think cracking choice there. I think it's, it's brilliant with the, the brand ad because it's very, very rich, so it cuts through the little bit of citrus. Very refreshing. Nice. I see you're, you're tempted by the squid, this end of the squid, yeah. but, but the but tentacle we can't... Don't make me eat the tentacle. <laughs> okay. I, I will if you force me, but... No, I, no, I, no, I, no. <laughs> what do you reckon? Well, I think Peter's bang on uh, yeah. today. Both choices so far have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Brilliant. really, really good. Right, let's go back to the great British menu. The, the judges, they're eating their way through the final fish courses before they give their verdict. Next up is Akhtar Islam. But before we go there, I've got this fork. It's been in your mouth. I'm going to auction this off. <laughs> 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 right, it's time to answer some of your foodie questions. Each colour is also going to help decide what Donny over here will be eating at the end of the show. Uh, you've had enough fish now, you won't be getting that again. Okay, uh, thank goodness. Uh, first thank on you. the line, we've got Janet from uh, Hertfordshire there. Are you there, Janet? Hello there, James. Hello, Janet. Hi, What's yeah. your question for us? Um, the be I'd like to know the best way to cook venison and what red wine would you use? Venison and what red wine? Who wants that one? Uh, me. Uh, venison, it? fantastic time of year now for venison. Uh, you can either use the loin and have it as an alternative Sunday roast rather yeah. than beef. Just roast it. It's got not a lot of fat on, so just roast it. A nice lot of black pepper served with some red cabbage. Or the back legs, you can dice and use it for like a bourguignon or like a nice stew. So you do some Bordeaux, really, it's quite a rich yeah, a red, bit, yeah, big gutsy red wine. Red wine yeah. yeah, or a Hermitage or a, maybe a little Saint Joseph uh, from, from the Cote Rotti, that'd be absolutely fantastic. OK, there you go, if you're going to do a stew with it as well. Yeah, a stew with it as well, yeah. There you go. And uh, what dish would you like to see at the end of the show? Have a hell. Um, um, I'd like um, Donny. Hi, Donny. Hi, how are you, Janet? <laughs> Yeah, I've got, um, Be kind. What do you want, heaven or hell? Uh, heaven, please. Ooh. Heaven. There you go. Thank there's you, Janet. Very nice. Andrea great from coach. South Wales. Are you there, Andrea? Hello there. Good morning. Hi there. What's your question for the guys over here? I've got a, a load of um, tiger prawns, and I'd like to serve them as canapes for my daughter's engagement party, but I don't know what to do with them. Tiger prawns. Are they got the head on or head off? They've got the head... No, they've got the head off, but the he tail on. Head off. Tail on, tiger prawns. I, uh, I love tiger prawns. I use a lot of them at work. Mm -hmm. I would recommend, uh, if they've got the shell on, maybe peel off the shell, lot olive oil, a little bit of chili pepper, and just bang them under the grill mm -hmm. until they go nice and roasty, nice caramelization. And then a li really simple little salad of diced mango, some lime juice, a little bit of basil, just in the middle, and then people can dip in. Tiger and we did the scallops thing, yeah, but your, your, your garnish that you serve with it would be yeah. fantastic. Or the almond satay would be perfect. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What dish would you like to see? Heaven or hell? Uh, I'm really sorry, Donny. You're my favourite favourite, but it's got to be hell. You've got to try it. 
<laughs> Julie from Staffordshire there, Julie. Oh, hello, James. Hi there. What's your question for us? Oh, well, of course, we all know Donnie's one of nine children, That's and right. I was wondering how his mother used to manage to cook for nine, and what was... Donnie's favourite meal she cooked. So it's not a question for you two, it's a question <laughs> no, no, for you. No, okay. My, my mum used to make big vats of stew. Right. You know, uh, just meat and potatoes, and she used to make homemade bread. Oh, I just, I can smell it right now. With, uh, with honey and butter. Mm. So, uh, big vats of stew. Because the nine children, you know, just yeah. kind of like fend for yourself. I'm surprised it wasn't a packed lunch and then you're off on tour again. <laughs> well, well it was either that or a club sandwich uh, from, room, from room service. Uh, let me guess in what your idea, what would you like to choose? Heaven or hell? Oh, for Donnie, only always heaven. Oh, <laughs> oh the cars, that one, that oh, one. Oh, baby. Uh, right, it's time for the omelette challenge. Uh, Glyn, you're in the top ten. That's Obviously, where I am, there. that's where I am, yeah. Fifth or sixth position there. Chris, who would you like to beat on our board? Or you just want to get onto the board? I'd like to get on the board, but I'd also like to make an omelette. All right. Well, I, got, well, I can't let the breakfast team down. That's what everybody one. else says here when they come in. But uh, <laughs> usual rules apply. Three egg omelette cooked as fast as you can. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Yeah, you're, you're, it's a it's done it. You've been practicing, you guys, aren't huh? you? Yeah, I always give a little blast before we come on. He's, 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 guaranteed, he's guaranteed to get there. <laughs> uh, Looking good, James. That looks pretty good to me. Looking good. Stop trying to pressure me, man. I'm not, but we've got you to get music in a minute. You're right. Lovely, Chris. Lovely. Hold on. Hold on. Is this an omelet or what? i got to see this. <laughs> It's a little runny there, dude. Uh, it's called Baverse. Uh, yeah. Baverse? Uh, <laughs> the French call it Baverse, yeah. yeah. That, that's, uh, that's cool, guys. That's, that's all right, it's all right. Yeah. You never actually had any, but you pretend it. We'll go to Chris first. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I have time to brush Chris, do you him. think you got in your top ten? No. No, you didn't. You did it in 42.88 seconds, which puts you quite a way down here somewhere. We need a new board at this rate. Look at that. It puts you right there. But that's fast for a... For a good omelette, though. Glyn. Yes. And I had that pan for you as well. Oh, oh, oh that's great. <laughs> I don't think it's as fast as the other one. See, I had that plan for you as well. Spent ages drawing that. It is perfect, actually. Look at that. that. <laughs> I, can, it smells, I can smell the shop look on this on it. You do look like one of those old weightlifters, though. <laughs> <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> you did it. Not as quick as you did before. Uh, 23.44 uh. seconds. Because we had to play this, didn't we? This yeah. goes in the bin. There you go. Uh, right, we'll do... <laughs> I think we'll just stay with you for that. <laughs> Will he go get any food heaven? That uh, roasted chicken with mint chutney or food hell? Aubergines with breadcrumbs and mozzarella and tomato sauce. Our chefs will make their choices whilst we hop over to Italy to catch up with those two gritty Italians, Antonio Calucci and Gennaro Contaldo. They're off to a christening at a friend's newborn baby. Uh, but it's only a matter of time before Gennaro finds his way to the kitchen. Come on, then, boys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's time to find out whether Don will be facing food heaven or food hell. Oh, food heaven. Please give me heaven. Would be chicken. Yes. Uh, it could be roasted off with some. Uh, I love you. Yeah, I know you love Indian spices I as well. I love Indian food. So we've got sort of a pot roasted mixture here with a nice little Indian style chutney with mint and coriander and yogurt and that kind of stuff. Okay. Alternatively, we've got eggplant, aubergine. Mm. Aubergine. Uh, pan fried, then rolled up and Ooh, served. Is that Parmesan? That's it. Ooh, Parmesan yeah, cheese. That might change my mozzarella mind. with. It's not your decision, though. Oh, it's it? not my decision. Right. I wish it was, but yeah. there you go. Uh, but it was up to these guys. Okay. What are you guys going to do? These guys are the deciding factor, you see, because it was 2 1 to our viewers at home. They were nice to you, because they chose chicken yeah. as well. So oh! Lose this out of the way. So, <clears> first thing we're going to do is uh, get our chicken prepped ready, because we're yes. going to pot roast this. It's slightly different to a roast chicken. Okay. Just we, we need the sauce from it, and we're going to create a nice little bit of moisture so the chicken can, stays nice and moist, really, rather than just so plain roast. Tie it chicken. all together. So just tie it together like that so the legs stay together. And then what we're going to do then, what the guys are going to do, is do the nice little salad which we've got as well. So, our salad compromises of some very, very finely diced onion. Uh, I'm going to throw the chicken in there as well. That's going to go into the pot. OK. Uh, and then we've got the beans. So it's going to be like a, a warm bean salad, really, more than anything else. See, so that scares me. <laughs> doing it that fast. 
practice makes perfect. It does, yeah. Think. So then, really, for this, what we add... A little ginger. Well, we keep the skins on the ginger. Because the side... Because this is really hot. The, the spice you get from the skins of ginger is like chilli. It's really, it's really hot. It gives you a little. Kick oh, so as well. it's not the meat that gives us. No, skin. no, it's, it's the skins that give you the spice as well. I so didn't know we that. throw the ginger in. Then we've got the garlic. Yep. Which love I know garlic. you love garlic, so we'll put plenty of that in there okay. as well. So again, just roughly chopped. Okay. Then we've got some cinnamon. Throw the whole stick in. All right. Star anise, which I love. You know, you tried that sort of uh, uh, that little bit of chervil earlier. Well, the star anise has got. Oh, yeah, that's great. Some lovely sort of aniseedy sort of flavour. This is cardamom, which is also one of my favourite spices. Love that. Cardamom goes in. Curry leaves, bay leaf. Oh, yeah. That one goes in. And then some ground cumin powder. So that's yeah. going to go in there as well. And all we do with this now is you just grab some water. I'll just lose this out of the way. Just grab some water. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Not water. <laughs> Not water. Not water. Nah. It's water. Water. Oh, water. Water. <laughs> no, what, not water. <laughs> water. That's what it is. Yeah, that goes in there. Okay. Throw that in. And then we pot roast this. So, salt, pepper, pot Dash. roast it. Pot roast it is basically just lid on for 45 minutes and then lid off for another 45 minutes. We don't have 45 minutes. No, nope. look at it. We've got one done. All uh, resting uh, over, <laughs> over in, in the back. The there. magic of so television. The guys are then preparing our salad. Uh, now, this has just been left to rest. So, you can tell us about the salad, guys, because. Um, <clears throat> So I've got, oh, the, peas, I've got the peas and the broad beans, which have already uh, been blanched. Just blanched you, some green beans and you, Chris on you some... finely diced red onion in there as well. Yeah. Now, the peas itself, you've got a, a, a pea story. I've got a pea I read, story. I read, is this I, true? I, this, is a, about this, this is a is true this... story. Right. When I was doing Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat in Chicago, right. on my day off, I called up this pea farmer and I said, I'm yeah, Donny Osmond. He says, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, he says, can, can I come to your pea farm and eat peas all day? He says, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. So he allowed me to go into his, his field and I was peeing all day just in the, in the pea field. Nice. And my wife, my kids, we were out there and we left with 20 <laughs> bags of peas. I love peas. Why the fascination night. for it? Then? I don't know. I just love peas. I guess it was when I was a little kid, my, my dad planted a garden. Yeah. And uh, I went out there, and it's one of those moments in your childhood where you're just like, you look back with, with, with a lot of love and passion. And yeah. And uh, I sat out there eating peas all day long. There you go. Because there's another story. What, I found it online as well. Ketchup. What's that about? Oh, I got a great ketchup. This, Aspen, is, a, this is restaurant. This yeah? is a restaurant story. You, you chefs will love this story. <laughs> so it was a very, really fancy restaurant, and uh, they brought out this, it had, it had french fries. Yeah. And I asked the, uh, the waiter, and I said, can I get some ketchup for my french fries? And he says, those aren't french fries. They're shoestring potatoes. I said, oh, excuse me. Yeah. Can, I have some <laughs> fr can I have some ketchup for my, sh for my shoestring potatoes? He says, we don't serve ketchup in this establishment. I said, OK. So I got up off the table, walked to the corner store, bought a bottle of ketchup, yeah. came back to the restaurant, and poured ketchup on my french fries. <clears throat> The master chef walks out of the Ooh, kitchen, right. walks up to me, <laughs> picks up the bottle of ketchup, and he says, Mr. Osmond, will you sign this bottle of ketchup for me? <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> what do you need to go in here, James? So what, what are you making? It? What is so this, this is the, the reduction sauce. We're just going to reduce this down to thicken it up a bit, because it's going to take a couple of minutes. Just to thicken this up. So you can portion up the chicken as well if you want, Glenn. Okay. But this is our, our little bit of what they call little Indian chutney. We've got mint, coriander, sugar, cumin, a little bit of touchy garlic. Okay, what is that? Uh, this yogurt? is yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah. yeah. Thick yogurt. That's going to go in there as well. Okay. And then just a bit of lemon. Uh, touch of chili in there as well. Can you just cut that in half for me? Thank you very much. You can do that. Oh, that smells okay. fantastic. Yeah. So that's going to go in there. And a touch of salt. And this makes a lovely, you like this. Really simple. It's not like a traditional chutney, of course. Okay. Yeah. But this is just delicious. Really light and simple. When you taste it, try that. Oh, wow. I really love fresh that. flavors. That flavor delicious. Is fantastic. Delicious. So we reduce this down, and by reducing this down, you concentrate all the flavors that you've got in here. Oh, okay. So we don't want the star anise in there, you just want the liquor. You, want, yeah. you reduce this down to make it thicker. Okay. And then the, the bean liquor salad. make it thicker. Make it thicker, that's it. The bean salad's here, which you guys can explain what you've done. So, uh, we've got, well. uh, yeah, we've dressed that. We've got a little bit of dressing. We've got lemon and olive oil. We've got the um, 
red onion, the peas, the broad beans, and some warm green beans we've just quickly blanched. Okay. And um, we season them off. We've got the chicken, got a little bit of breast, a little bit of leg, mm. which we'll drop on. Mm hmm. Uh, James has got the. This is the Michelin style way of plating it up, you see. Yeah, oh, that looks so good. Yeah, wait till you taste, James. Is it the chutney? Yeah, you, yeah. A, you might want to clean the plate a bit. But then I'll we'll... sort that out, James. Don't worry about that. And then, have we got any butter? <laughs> yeah, we've got a little bit. Yeah, a bit of butter on there. A little bit of butter, just to finish this off. Can I go with a little bit of your chutney here, James? Yeah, just on the side there. That's it. Brilliant. That's it. And a tiny little bit of butter just goes in here, just to finish this off. So, this is... Little tip when you're making a um, your gravy. Yes. A little bit of butter at the end. Reduce butter makes everything better. <laughs> That's what I've been going on for years. You see? <laughs> <laughs> you're not far wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> it makes everything better. It does. Uh, and then you just take this and we just pour this. So it creates a nice little. It's not really a thick sauce, but it's just a sauce to go with it. Right. Mm. A little bit of juice just to, to go on the side. Yeah. Extra bit of flavour. Right. Grab some knives and forks, guys. Oh, you get those good. Mm. And you can dive in. On the oh. side, they're getting off the fork. <laughs> and tell us what you think. Wow. Now, to go with wow. this, Peter's chosen a black cottage. Can I go ahead and dive in? Jesse, yeah, yeah, fire away. Uh, priced at uh, £9.74. pence. But try that with the uh, that little bit of chutney. It's so simple. Mint, coriander, don't forget the bit of sugar, though. That makes all the difference. Is it heaven? It's Hold not. on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I tried the peas as well, obviously, as well. I'm in heaven. <laughs> I am in heaven. It this... kind of makes up for all those fish that you've been eating. Yeah, this, yeah there's no tentacles in here. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's almost like a rough journey. We started off on the rocky road, now we're just we're now we're cruising. We are the ending in, in heaven, guys. Yeah. This is fantastic. I can't talk to you seriously with this Some moustache. How long are you going to wear it for? I've got another couple of weeks and then it's off, James. Is it? Oh, so, yeah. Jealousy is a strong emotion. Go, Chris, dive into that. <laughs> Thank you. So, for anybody just tuning in, tell us about the album, because this is your 60th album you've my got 60th out 60th album, Soundtrack of My Life, came out Monday. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, if um, we'll find out Monday what the entry level of the chart is. Yeah. If it is 14, like they say it's going to be, it'll yeah. be the highest charting album entry level I've ever had in my lifetime. Well, oh. I've increased that by three copies because one of our runners has gone out and bought me three copies <laughs> of the CD as well. So, so, good, so they, good looker for that. Exactly. There you are. Best of luck with it as well. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all for today in Saturday Kitchen. Thanks to Glyn Pennell, Chris King and the fabulous Donny Osmond. Uh, cheers to Peter Richards for the great wine choice today. Remember all of today's recipes, of course, on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. We'll be back at the usual time next week and there's more Best Bites tomorrow at the slightly earlier time of 9.30 on BBC Two. In the meantime, have a great day and enjoy the rest of your weekend and enjoy your chicken. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs>